So for our last part, we're going to move from factored form to standard form. So here on the outside of the rectangle, for my length, I have one piece. For my width, I have two pieces, x and 7. So to multiply that, x times x is x squared. 7 times x is 7x. So inside the rectangle, I have x squared and then plus 7x. So now this piece, we're going to have to make a rectangle and put it into factored form. So here, my rectangle just has an x squared piece and then next to a 9x piece. So here, I know that I'm going to have x and x. Then to make this piece, I would have 9x divided by that x would make 9. So here, this x and 9 is really x plus 9. I could think of it that way. So then my length and width would be x times x plus 9. So a lot of people just take the x out of the first one and put x on the outside of the parentheses and then put an x and a plus 9. So here again, to move from standard form to factored form, we can draw our area model. So we have x squared, negative 8x. So here we would have x and x, and then a minus 8. So that goes on the outside. Here's an x. And then this is an x times x minus 8. Now this x plus 6 times x plus 2, we have to make a more complicated rectangle. So this length has two pieces, x and 6. Remember, this is positive, so it could write a positive. And then the x and the 2, two pieces right here. And then multiplying the rectangles, x times x makes x squared. 2 times x is 2x. 6 times x is 6x, 6, 6 times 2 is 12. So now collecting our pieces, we have x squared. 2x plus 6x makes plus 8x and then plus 12. So now to move and to factor when it's in standard form and you have all three pieces. One thing that we can do is draw in our area model, and we know there's going to be four boxes, but the upper left is going to be x squared, and the lower right is going to be 12. Then here are going to be my x pieces. So this, I know I'm going to have x and x, but I need two numbers that multiply together to make 12 that add together to be 13. Well, the only way to do that, if I did 1 and 12, 1 times 12 is 12, and 1 plus 12 is 13. Looking at that, 12 times x here, this would make 12x. 1 times x there would make 1x. So here, x squared plus 1x plus 12x, x squared plus 13x plus 12. So this is how I break up my standard form inside the rectangle. And on the outside in factored form, this would be x plus 1, and then this would be x plus 12. So here we have x plus 1, and then times x plus 12. Similarly, um, we're going to do this with just distribution. So you may have seen here, if I go x times x, that's x squared. x times a negative 2 would be minus 2x. Negative 6 times x would be minus 6x. Negative 6 times negative 2 would be plus 12. Combining our like terms, we have to combine those. So this stays the same. We have x squared, negative 2x minus 6x would be minus 8x, and then here plus 12. And now as we work through this part, we are going to factor standard form. 
So to draw our rectangle here, we have x squared here, 12 here. And then I know that we're going to have x and x. And I need factors of positive 12 that add together to be negative 7. So both of these have to be negative. So what two numbers that when I multiply them to 12 make, and then I add them, will make 7? Well, that has to be 3 and 4. So this would be minus 4x. This would be minus 3x. Checking that, we have x squared. Negative 4x plus negative 3x is negative uh, 7x. And then this is 12. So this piece, I would have x minus 3. And then here, we would have x minus 4. So now we have x squared plus 6x plus 9. So here you have x squared and then 9. So that would be x and x. And then here, this would be 3 and 3. This would be 3x and another 3x. So that would be x plus 3 and another x plus 3. So this would be x plus 3 times x plus 3. Or a lot of times when that's repeated twice, people will just write x plus 3 squared. So similarly, x squared plus 10x plus 9. Oftentimes here, people will just go and factor directly. So another way to do that is I know that my binomial expression or my two things here have to be x and x. Both of these have to be positive. And we're looking here for factors of 9 that sum to 10. So you don't have to write them all out, but two things that multiply together to make 9. And then when I add them, it makes 10. Well, 3 plus 3, because 3 times 3 is 9, but 3 plus 3 is 6, so that doesn't work. The only other way to do it is 1 and 9. 1 times 9 is 9. And 1 plus 9 is 10. So I would just write here 1 and 9. So that's another way of factoring. You don't have to use the area model every time. Same idea here. If I had x squared minus 10x plus 9, well, I would have factors of 9, but they have to sum now. So I'm going to write factors of 9. They have to sum to be negative 10. Well, what would happen is instead of both of these being positive, both have to be negative. So this would be x minus 1 times x minus 9. And then same idea here, x squared minus 6x minus 9. We could, let's draw out the area model. So here I have my x squared. Here I have my 9. And then we need our x pieces, so x and x. But again, we need factors of 9 that add together to be negative 6. Well, in order to do that, both of these have to be negative. And then if they're both negative and add to 6, they both have to be 3. So this would be minus 3x minus 3x. And then this would be x minus 3 times x minus 3 which equals x minus 3 squared. And then I'm going to leave this one for you guys uh, to work on on your own. But if you can't get it, don't worry about it. It's more symbolically a challenge.